G'day Stephen, I'm Dave or DMAC, Mick's behind the camera, so if I call you Mick, you know why. Um, you're getting a video because you're in Darwin, like you bugger. Um, we're gonna go around and show you how your Birdsville works. We'll do the outside first, and then we'll jump inside and do the inside stuff. Any of these locks, it's all the same key and they've all been labeled for you. And what, most of them have got a latch to hold it up above your head, other than the bottom one, so you can't do it by accident and leave the drawer when you're doing the slide out. Get used to where your storages are because you can access some of these from the inside of your motorhome. So you work out what you want to put where. The beauty of these locks is that when you lock it, you just push the button. When you unlock it, you can re-lock it straight away and then open, close, open, close all weekend. Time to go, push the button. Easy as. Same, same on this one. This one's uh, obviously the back of your seat, so there's a bit of stuff under there to avoid. But we'll lock these up again. Whoever your mate is coming on Monday, whether we show him this sort of stuff or not, he just needs to know how to get it to you, I think. The bottom cupboards, they're all the same keys as each other, but different from them. There's no pin to hold this up, because if you've got this up and you play this slide, you're going to be in strife. You've got your two house batteries, so that powers the back end of your motorhome. Your slide out overrides also in there. So if you have any issues with your slide out, they'll be looking for that. Because that sets your limits in and out, basically. And uh, all your solar stuff is all feeding in through there, your diesel heater, all those sort of capable things that you've had to put in. We're also going to lock this one up because you're not really going to access that cupboard a lot until you start traveling and you work out whether or not you're keeping a spare power cord in there or your toolkit or whatever you got going on. So as we go around, we're just locking stuff up. If your mate needs to see it open, we'll open it up for you. Up here, we've got your 15 amp cord where it plugs in and your circuit breaker. So if something's not working, it's 240 volt, check that. Down under here is your gas bottles. This one we'll leave unlocked. They're both full. And there's a little switch up here that tells me I'm using the right hand one, which is why it's open. In a perfect world, you'll turn it off for travel so that if somebody does have to run into you, you're not gonna have gas floating around everywhere. It's not a bad storage boot for some random stuff because you've got to go in here when you get somewhere. That might be where you keep your power cords, for example. That one we shall leave open. We need to lock it up. Now your water out all goes through a grey tank and then out through here. If I crack that open, you'll see we're making a puddle. So we'll drain that off before your mate leaves on Monday, just so you're not having it. Um, leave it shut unless you're using it, basically. There's a hose to go onto that. Your water in, you've got two choices. You can either screw on a hose attachment here and connect your hose and you've got pressured water going through your van. Or you can fill up your water tank. Just drop the hose in there and away you go. There's a water pump switch inside if you want to use that water. I'll show you where that is, of course. And that's also locked. They'll be full, so you'll have water for your mate. Your toilet. To get it out, it's just that little blue lever, flick it up and down. You do get a drag handle, so you can drag it through the caravan park. And to empty it, unscrew that, push the button, pour it out. Easy peasy. If you're off emptying this, leave the door open. If somebody inside opens your toilet, they'll see daylight. Hopefully they won't use it, because, because that's not there. Make sure it locks in when it goes back in. And when it's locked, you can't push the button. Easy peasy. More keys, more ladies. Your tow ball stuff's already under there with your seven pin flat. Um, it's not a bad idea to not have that in there. If you're not using it, somebody might think it's nice and shiny and want to keep it. Down under here is the rest of your power controls. So your fuse box, your battery charger, and your solar controller. It's a nice size cupboard. You might put stuff in here that you're using out here, stubby holders, bits and pieces like that. But try not to hit near the off buttons or unplug stuff, because it generally doesn't like it. But if something 12 volts not working, check your fuses. I'll lock that one up as well if I can find the key in there in your pocket. Because you generally don't need to get to that cupboard at all. You've got a gas outlet so you can cook your barbecue out here. 
You'll also have an outdoor shower, hot and cold. Very handy to wash your boots or the dog or wake up your mate who's sleeping out here in a swag. Outside 240 power, normal 10 amp cord, electric fry pan, stuff like that. Your nice picnic table, easy peasy. They are only rated at 25 kilos, so it's good to put an electric fry pan or a kettle or something on, or potentially a little gas barbie. That's why you got the hose, um, but nothing too heavy. There's a key for that. Which of these funky ones are strangely enough say picnic table. And that's now locked, so you can't accidentally get into it. Down under here is what we'd likely call your entertainment cupboard. Because if you're having a show or people or barbecue out here, this is where you want to keep all the bits and pieces that um, you want to use, because it's on this side of the van. It's a nice big storage area. There is a little light up in here. Find a button for it. There it is. Um, but you can't access this cupboard from the inside. So if you lose your keys in there, you're stuffed. So don't throw your keys in this one. And again, we'll lock him up because there's no point having it open, especially driving all the way to Darwin. Easy peasy. Now, before we jump in and play with your awning, this is part of your hot water system. If you want to run your hot water on gas, you got to take that off. It will not let you light it if that's on. And make sure it's on, because otherwise it'll disappear. Hopefully your mate's not using your hot water, so it'll be there when you get to it. Now, your awning is the bit that's going to make you look good when you pull up. And hopefully your mate's going to wash this for you before you get it, because it's going to look as shiny as it does. I'm just going to grab your awning hook. We'll just have that stashed inside up on the top bed for you. And this is pretty easy at the end of the day. Loosen off this thumb screw, slide that out the way. It's just a gentle squeeze together to help it get there. Do the same down this end. Loosen that off, push it out the way. Easy peasy. Now with your stick, push that to the roll down position, grab the strap, pull it out. Once it's out, slide these up and they go over these grey pins, do it up. That ends secure to the breeze. The same with this, make sure it goes over the pin. The handle's got the locking pin in it. Grab it, slide it out to whatever height you like. Easy peasy, job done. You can stand the leg up of course. Just a matter of pushing that, pulling the leg out, standing it up. But there's a fair bit of weight involved with that if you want to do it that way. Um, get the height you like, easy peasy. If it's going to be windy, put it away. Loosen that off, bring it down to height, push that with your thumb. If it's already gotten windy, somebody has to lean on this so it's not doing this on you. Same thing on this end. Loosen it, push it with your thumb, slide it out the way. Grab your strap, pull down a little bit, flick that switch. As soon as it starts winding up, you need to make sure you've got your hook somewhere. Grab onto your strap, let it wind up so it doesn't make a big bang. Lock it in, do it up. Lock it in, do it up. Your awning is still trying to wind up so it can't come out by accident. These clips are in so it can't rattle out by accident. Practice that if you can. Makes you look good when you get there. Now these are just your fridge vents. Keep them nice and clean. Stops the spiders getting in there. And I know the Territory's got some big spiders. You don't really want them climbing around in there behind your fridge. Your little light out here. Your door's pretty straightforward, flick the handle. When it's locked, you can't flick the handle. That's the lock for the door. It does have a tendency, if you swing it red and slam the door shut, it locks. And if you've already locked the front, the keys are inside, you're in stride. So try not to ever do that from the outside. 
you got a cabin hook so that it will hold your door pinned open when you're walking in and out. Remember there's a cabin hook, don't just grab on the door from the inside and reef it shut, you will break stuff. Your step is a power step, and there's a little switch here. If you start the engine, the step disappears and it beeps at you to remind you that it's just put your step away. If somebody's still packing up and you're warming up the engine, you can trip out coming out of there. Now we're going to jump inside, Stephen, so climb aboard. Stephen, now we're on the inside. All I've done in the gap is work your slide out. You've got to hold the button to make it function all the way in and out. It's not just a switch. So you've got to hold it to come in or hold it to go out. Always be all out or all in, never halfway. This is the control panel that you're going to be playing with when you jump in the back half. This is your power button. So when it's time to travel, you'll turn that off. Your fridge will stay running though. Jump in the back, push on it, it'll power everything up. It'll come up green down here, which is what we want to see. If it's red, the panel is going to tell you that something's wrong. One of your batteries might be running flat, either the cab or the, um, the house battery. Your water tank might be getting empty or full. It'll tell you stuff. Across the top on the switches, the one that says 12 volt is effectively your lights, master. So wherever you've left your lights turned on, that can turn them off. That one's your water pump. Off if you're going to hook the hose up. On if you're going to use your onboard tank water. That one is your outside light for the porch step. So it's just easy to do. That one is the dimmer for this. So if you find that it's too bright at night, you can dim it right down. Across the bottom, we've got a battery that'll give us more about your battery situation. That's telling us that the driving battery is fully charged and the back battery is fully charged, as we'd expect. That one tells us about your water supply. 80% full, 30% grey. By the time you get this, it'll be changed because your mate, if he's using your water, but we'll empty that one. On the initial screen, it gives you your fresh water level, your battery level for the back half, the fact that we're plugged into power, the time, which is about correct. I can't remember what Darwin time is, um, and temperatures. So it gives you a bit of a heads up. If you want to change the times, you hold the program button in, and it comes into options to change the clock, set alarms and stuff like that. So there are ways to play with it. You do get all the books, so it does come in handy. The important thing to remember is you're playing with that when you jump in. These are all light switches, so you can turn off individual lights scattered around the place. What we want you to do when you get somewhere, if you plug it into power, have a quick squeeze at your microwave, it'll tell you that yes, you've got 240 volt power. If you're gonna use your tank water, turn your pump on, run the hot tap but make sure that your hot tank is full. It also gives you a chance to wash your hands or whatever you need to do. It gets any bubbles out of the system. If you hook it up to the hose, because you're at a caravan park or somewhere, leave your pump off, but still run the tap. It gets any air out of your hose, out your system, it won't cough and splutter when it's hot. Now to turn on your hot water system, we're gonna to come to the bathroom. Up in this cupboard, there's a black power point plug. That is your hot water. The grey one, which I don't know if Mickey can see with his camera from there, is for your washing machine. In a normal situation, you leave the washing machine turned off, unless you need it on, of course, and you leave the tap for it turned off as well, which is just up in there, until you need it to function. I've now turned on your 240 volt hot water. We're also going to turn that off before we travel, so it won't accidentally come on if you plug in. This is the switch for your gas hot water. I've now tried to turn that on. Down is 70 degrees, up is 60. So if you've got kids in the shower, they can't burn themselves effectively. There'll be a red light that comes on. You can't see it there, but I can see that it's on. It's reflecting on my finger. It won't light because that cover's on outside. So if you see that red light, you're not gonna get gassed hot water. That is the size of your tank. It's not a massive tank, so you can't be in the shower forever. You've also got your water pump stashed in up here and your various plumbing to get it around the place. So if it's making a noise all the time, you know why it's doing it. Now I'll turn that off for now. And your washing machine's your washing machine, let's be honest. We're going back for your fridge. Hopefully you've got as long as legs as Mick and I have and it takes no time at all. Because if you remember how to do your awning, you remember to run your tap when you get somewhere, you're gonna have water. Your fridge hopefully is just doing to keep your beer cold. 
There's a little blue light here, you can just see it reflecting off my fingernail, that tells me your fridge is on. If I tap it, the LED screen pops up to say we're on automatic, we're on power, we're on maximum cold. Now she's already cold in there as we expect, and it's a nice big size fridge. Being on automatic, if we lost 240 volt power, it'll go to gas by itself. When we start the front, it'll go to battery by itself to maintain its temperature while you're driving down the road. If I tap that button, for example, I've now told it to light on gas manually. So if you were to hook a generator up, you can get away with a smaller generator because it's not having to run your fridge. It's also how you change the temperature if it's too cold for you, but leave it on automatic. If it comes up with an error, I've now told it to go to battery, which is this battery. It comes up with an error and a little spanner will tell me that the engine's not running. So if you see your fridge flashing at you, you know you've got a problem. But leave it on automatic most of the time and it's perfect for you. There is a little travel latch that you can lock on so your fridge door won't swing open. Probably not very useful on this because you're sitting there. You'll know if it comes open, you can swing it shut. If you want to take that off, you can just take it out and then you're not going to get caught that um, you've stuck your fridge shut and you're reefing on the top trying to get it open, it's because you've got that pin on. You do have gas cutoffs and a power point behind there for it. It's well worth looking in there when you start playing with this to work out where power points are for things. Because um, if your fridge isn't running on 240 one day, it's probably that power point's either jiggled loose because you've hidden something in there. Or we know where we're tracking. Things like your microwave, Take your tray out for travel, because it's going to rattle around. We'll leave it in there to remind your mate on Monday that he has to take it out. So if he wants to microwave his popcorn halfway there, he'll know where he's stashed it. So we'll leave that so he's got to worry about stashing that. Now we'll just work our way around so we can cover off all your appliances, basically. All of your lights, you can dial them into a nice little blue light or varying stages of white if you like, the button's just in the middle. Your cooktop, nice gassies. Hold it, click it, and you'll get gas coming through. It's not a bad idea to have one of those long matches because the clicking noise gets annoying after a while. It's an induction hot plate, so your regular fry pan's not gonna work, you gotta get the induction one. What we're gonna find in the top drawer, or you're gonna find hopefully when you get to it, um, some hose fittings. All of your keys will be in here. Your air conditioner control, point and shoot. And basically follow the numbers and you know, make it hold or cold. There's little flaps here you can angle to get more air around. You've actually got more light in there, just more stuff. Um, anything you do from here, you can also do on the touch screen up on there if you need to. We don't mount it because too many people tell us they like them in different spots. We've also got your TV remote stashed in there. Now, I don't know if Mick angled up before, but your TV antenna's up. Once it's up, you can spin it around to fine tune and get a better picture. We may not get a picture where we are because we're under a carport and the weather's a bit feral. We'll find out. Yours is a smart TV as well, so you can do all your Netflixing and chilling and whatever people do up in the Territory when it's too hot or rainy to go outside. Just wait for it to catch up with us. And picture. So there we go, we're on channel nine down here in town. What you'll need to do when it gets up to you is come into program and retune it. Because obviously you've got different stations that we've got. To get into your smart TV stuff, just go into home and it will bring up your smart TV options about whatever you're going to set up and do with it. Um, turn it off for travel. Line up the peaks on your TV antenna when it's time to wind it down so that you don't drive off with it sitting up there. It's not a good idea to drive off with it sitting up there. If your TV can sit where it is, it's got a bracket on the back to stop it swinging around. Um, you can undo that bracket of course and then your TV will swing out to a good, a good extent so you can actually see it from the couch. That's also going back in your top drawer. So anything you're looking for is either going to be in your top drawer or your second drawer. You do have filtered water coming out of your supply, either hose or pump. Um, the filter for it is tucked up in there, so it's easy to access when you need to change it. Your diesel heater, when it gets cold up in the territory, 
I'm not sure it does, it's getting cold up in the territory. I've just turned it on, that's it. Just turn the dial. The further clockwise you go, the hotter it's gonna get in here. We'll leave that on for a bit because Mick feels the cold. Diffusion radio, on and off. You do have options for CD up in the top. USB access if that's how you keep your tunes. Um, turn it on and off and away you go. Look for all your power points and your 12 volt outlets so you can charge up your phones properly. Now, up in this cupboard is a nice little shape that tells us the original specs of your motorhome. The fact that you've got a 120 litre fresh tank, 120 litre grey tank, things like that. Um, if somebody pulls you over and wants to know the weight specs of your van and stuff, it's all in there. So as long as you know where it is, everyone's happy. Now into your bathroom, it's very straightforward. You do have a bathroom slider. Got your shower hose, of course. Got your wind up roof vent with a fan in it, as you'd expect. But your toilet's what everyone wants to know. You can spin the lid. So you can point your legs out the door if you're a long-legged gent. You can sit it sideways if you've got your laptop up there or your crossword puzzle. Open it. Open to the cassette. That's where you're doing your business, once it's open in the cassette. The blue button is flush. It'll flush as long as you hold the button down. Once you're done, shut it off. Use any of the chemicals, because that's what they're there for, put it in there. And you do need to do everything in your toilet to make the chemicals work. There's a gauge down here that'll go progressively green to red as it fills up. Put a hair tie or something on your um, toilet roll so it doesn't spin off on the floor. And more of these funky lights, they're everywhere. If you're done in the bathroom, turn off the lights. Shut your door and pin that across as you lock. Obviously, we're going to show your mate how to use the bathroom because, well, unless you don't want him to, we won't show him. Um, you probably won't get this video before he gets here, though. Under your bed's a little cache of goodies. We've got your grey water hose that connects onto the van side, cam lock, very easy. A fresh water hose for you so you can top up on his travels. Your power cord so you've got something to plug in. And this is the shade for the front windscreen of the cab. So of course when the sun pops up, it's not blindingly at night. A bit of storage space up there for bits and pieces. But again, that's up to you. Don't forget you've got storage under here. You know, a lot of the storage spaces aren't massive, but there's lots of them. Free quilt, just in case your mate gets told. Roof hatch, just follow the arrows that say wind up and wind down. You know, pretty obvious stuff at the end of the day. Your seating area. If you don't want people to know that you uh, have seat belts, you can pop all of these out because they're all Velcro and hide your seat belts behind them. Very good trick so people don't catch it. Now your table can do a number of movements. There's a lever here. The one that's loose, your table, table can do a horizontal slide in whichever direction you like. The round one, you loosen that off, your table can then spin. If you haven't brought it this way, of course, it's gonna hit the wall. Once you've lined it back up, tension it up. Now they are plastic, so don't over tension it. You're not wrestling a crocodile. That one is your height, so you can drop it down in case you didn't want your mate sleeping in that bed or up the top. More of a kiddie sized bed. You can drop the table right down, or you can take the whole thing out. You're just sick of having a table there. These are your access panels for those outside panels. So if you've got stuff in there you need to get there from inside outside, away you go. A couple of free cushions, Bob's your uncle. Pull down blinds, wind out windows. So it's all very straightforward. Make sure you shut it all for, tra for travel and transit. Um, your fire extinguisher is down under there, under your bed. So if you need it, you're not gonna put this out, you're doing it for somebody else. This is a great invention, I reckon. You flick this thing down when you're setting up, people have to get through a barrier to come in and say good day. You got your beer up there, they got to, they know what beer you drink, so they know what to buy you. Make sure you shut it. All of these, they're a twist first, so don't just yank on it, twist it, and it's released. That's pretty much the back end of your motorhome. We'll have a quick chat about the front, and there's a lot to talk about in the front, but before we do, 
Normally Cheryl or Andrew would come over at this point in time and give you a nice little baggie of uh, a couple of travel mugs, the roadside assistance numbers, which will give you another copy of, and all the book work here. So all of your appliances have a book. For example, your hot water service. Tells you how to run it. Same sort of thing we've just talked about. Everything in you has a book though. You do also get the Avita Owners and Service Manual. So it gives you a bit of a run through about the same sort of stuff we've been talking about. You get this big blue book, which is the cabin book. Now what I'm bringing to your attention is that's the fob key that Avita sends you for the cab. It's got the nice little fold out clip with the button on it and the buttons to, order, uh, to deadlock or open your doors. Your spare key doesn't have the buttons, but it's wrapped up in this blue book so we know it's there. I've also got the door key for that on this set of keys, so you can lock that before you drive off and then you can worry about unlocking all your other bits when you get there. All of that stuff's going to be in that bag and that's going to be in this second drawer with some other bits and pieces, your gas hose, for your barbecue and stuff like that, and some other bits and pieces that we fitted in for. Nice soft closed drawers, click and away she goes. Now we'll probably spend more time showing your mate how to play with the front, because he's going to be driving. Wow, that's getting hot. I'll turn that off now. Mickey's starting to sweat, he's peeling off layers. The important things to remember about the front is these seats can spin around. There's just a lever here for that. You need to have your seats reasonably far forward to accommodate them swinging past the pillars. So generally you won't do it from sitting on here unless you've got little legs. Even though you've got a stereo in the back end, you can turn on the stereo in the front without the keys in. So if you're listening to something important, you can turn this one back on before you get that one organized. And we'll just wait for him to catch up. Or you can play with your sat nav, for example, and dial in your next destination before you actually pack up camp and have a bit of a play with it. Um, it's worth getting used to that because it is handy when you're trying to drive around, you're not sure where you're going. It'll give you all sorts of instructions. Probably one, well, here it comes up now. Don't set home as your house though, because if somebody steals your motor home, they've probably got your house keys and they know where you live. Other than that, treat it like a radio in your car. Um, cruise control. If you've had cruise control before, it's exactly the same sort of system. Turn it on when you're at the right speed, and then you can tap up and tap down. Um, indicators and things are on the wrong side to what you might expect, they're over here. Almost guarantee at least once you'll flip your wiper blades on instead of your indicators, guarantee it. Um, you do have stereo controls here, so Bluetooth and into your phones, so you can answer the phone while you're driving and all that sort of stuff. The gearing's pretty straightforward, P for park, R for not race, not for neutral and D for drag. And you just come across and shift it down. Once you're in drive, you can still shift up or down a gear if there's a hill coming and you want to engage a bit longer. You've got little map stash spots. You can put your phone up here, for example, if you wanted to, or you can put in a strip map or local attractions. You do have storage stashes all over the place up here. So spend a bit of time getting used to where your stuff is. Um, there's plenty of seat adjustments right up to the armrests. So on my left, which will be your right, there's two levers. One does the front half of your seat, one does the back half. On the sides, you can adjust your normal seat that way and a bit of lumbar support. And the bar at the front is how you drive your seat forward and back. There's a lever under here that'll allow the steering wheel to go in or out, depending on your comfort level. If we start it up now, Ugh. Always put your foot on the brakes, just a good idea. Oh, see, I've already got your wipers working once. There we go. When it fires up, you'll hear it beep and the step comes in. If the dash is trying to tell you something that you've left the door open, it tells you on the dashboard that something's not right. There's a drive mode button. Normal power or EK. Let's be honest, you'll probably leave it in power for its life. And with your foot on the brake, you pop it into reverse, your reverse camera comes up so you can see what you're about to back into or down to drive you back in again. It'll tell you up in here that you're on power drive and you can still then jump up. If you go left, up or down a gear while you're driving along. Most people just leave it in D for drive. Depends how you like to drive, it's entirely up to you. 
Handbrakes on your right hand side, make sure you take it off. Again, sounds obvious, but a lot of people drive without it. Um, and get used to your controls. Try and spend a bit of time just sitting in the front working this stuff out so that you don't have to worry about it whilst you're driving. Central locking only does these two doors, not your back door. So make sure you lock that for travel. You don't want to pick up any strays when you stop for fuel. Lane assistance, you can turn it off. Downhill descent, you can turn it on. It'll engage your gearing a bit longer so you're not gonna momentum creep up into the next gear. Traction control, same thing. You can turn it off if you need to. Um, you've got a mode button on this side that brings up different things on your dashboard. So for example, I can turn off the passenger airbag for a trip. So if you've got a small child in here or a bassinet or your dog or whatever, and you don't want the airbag potentially going into them, you can turn that stuff off. But when you then start it again, it will come on by default. Like I say about storage, you've got options everywhere. Um, we'll shut him down there for a minute. Oh, and I'll come back to the back. Now we're doing a bit of a condensed version because we normally have a chat time where we talk about this. I forgot, I just ducked straight under it. You've got your ladder. Come in horizontally to latch it into these. So if, say for example, the kids are up there sleeping, they can't kick the ladder off. You do have a travel net or a kitty net. So if you're leaving stuff up there, clip the net up so it can't fall down. If you're a tall unit, put it up. It gives you a lot easier access to get in and out without banging your melons. Now, assuming that you're the driver all the time and you've got somebody sitting in the passenger seat, your job is to drive. The passenger job is to do everything else. So let's hop back out. I've got to put the step out, of course. Ah. Assuming your navigator's a helpful sort of a person, you can't remember which side the fuel is, it's their side. Yes, you'll need your ignition key to open the diesel, and you've got AdBlue. It'll give you alerts when you start to run out on that. You've got thousands upon thousands of Ks before you worry about it too much. Under the passenger seat is your toolkit and your jack. So again, it's your navigator's job to worry about that stuff. You're the driver. You do have your nice carpet in there. You've also got your bonnet release out on this side. So if you've got a fuel up, change a tire, pop the bonnet, it's your navigator's job. Flip the lever, normal sort of stuff for the bonnet. Make sure you latch that up. Now what we're looking for in here is all the pretty colors, let's be honest. You got your windscreen washer bottle up the top there. You got your radiator overflow, you got your power steering and your brake fluid. You've got your dipstick and your oil in there. You do have down in here, a positive access terminal for your battery and an earth plug for it. So it's hiding in down under that. So if you did need to get or give a jump start, you got out options. If you are storing up for a while, you can put a charger or a solar panel on that to keep your front battery charged up. So you don't have to access the battery, which is physically under the navigator's seat. Your nice big spotties, they'll come on when you turn your high beam on. And all of a sudden, we're at the outside. This is where we normally go into question time. And if you've got a mechanical question, I'll get Rocco over. If we want to go over some more in the back, we'll go over some more in the back. A bit hard to do for you. Hopefully your mates fairly clued up. What we will do is jump back in the back here. Because what you're also going to find in your motorhome will be this Avita sheet. Once you get it and you've reviewed the video and it all makes sense, Initial it off and send it back to us so we can send it on to Avita for you. We will leave our workshop report about your motorhome in here. Add to it with all the extra bits you've had put on, like your spotlights, etc., etc., And you'll find some other paperwork about various bits and pieces, which is in that bag, but we break it down for you. The girls love printing paperwork. So all of that stuff is going to be in that drawer as well. Once you're... Um, once your buddy picks it up for you on Monday, I'll get him to sign off this one and we'll run through him the bits and pieces he needs to know about to get it up to you safely as well. Um, like I say, now is normally question time. Danny then comes over and takes you for a drive and fills up the diesel. He's already filled it up for you. I know he's done that, so it's already easy. If you were packing up to drive now, bring your slide out in. So you've got to hold the button. 
If you had it on auto and you wanted off in the bathroom, you might get in strike because you get half lane get caught. Remember, of course, when you pull up, you need that meter or so out that side. Don't park right up next to the trees. And we're in. If you did need to go to the bathroom or you'd forgotten to do it, shut the door, stunt roll across. Have a look at how much space you do and don't have tucked in on the end of your mattress, because it does tuck under. If you've got heavy bedding on, fold it up. So it's not gonna push up against all your cupboardry and all that sort of stuff. If you need to, you can still stunt roll across. Um, when it's time to go, you turn it off. Your fridge is still running independently though. We're gonna leave that on so that it's nice and cold for collection on Monday. And we'll show him again how to do all this stuff. We may have the video ready so he can review that as well. I think that's about it, Stephen. Enjoy your new motorhome when it gets up to you. If you get any questions, our laminated sheet in there's got our phone number on it. Give us a call. We can sort you out. You will get a call from Avita three weeks, four weeks. So when an O2 number pops up, that's them just ringing to say good day. Um, your salesman will probably ring you in a couple of days. I'll diarise to ring you probably Wednesday week, because then you've probably had it yourself for a week and you might have some questions for us. If in the meantime you get questions, just ring us up. We'll look after you. Cheers.